we'll see how Clint Boyer does as he leads the field to the green flag. Second race of the doubleheader underway from Michigan. That inside line getting a push. 24-48 lined up. Jimmy Johnson trying to give William Byron the lead as they go through one and two. Matt DiBenedetto to the top. Free ride around Matt Kenton. He's going to use that momentum to suck up behind Jimmy Johnson. Push him down the back straightaway. Joe Logano trying to go four wide underneath. Kurt Busch into turn three. Benedetto to the outside of Jimmy Johnson. Quaint, can't quite get there. Joe Logano in that yellow car. He had the left side tires below the white line. Big trouble in the middle. They all worked that out somehow. Yeah. That was Matt. a big advantage to Kurt Busch. Look at the run he got because of that. Matt Kenseth was super loose. Joey was loose. Those guys lost a lot of momentum. And look at the track position they lost. Kevin Kenseth. Harvick slicing up through there. They, they had great track position to start this race, and it's gone in one lap. <laughs> Hendrick teammates battling it out here. Matt almost went three wide there, but he's going to pass, push Jimmy back into second place here around Byron. This is an important stage for both Jimmy and Byron to grab some points. Right around that bubble for both those guys trying to make the playoffs. I talked to Matt Benedetto this morning, and he said that yesterday was the worst car he had driven all year long. Major changes today. Yeah, he's looking very strong in that Wood Brothers Ford. In the 21, they're chasing after the 48. Marty? Yeah, I talked to Cliff Daniels, the crew chief for Jimmy Johnson, and he mentioned exactly what you talked about, Junior. This is a critical stage for the 48 team. Right now, they, camp, they come into this race 16 points below the cut line, so they need to gain some points in this stage. I asked Cliff, are you paying attention to the other teams on the bubble? He said, absolutely not. I did last year. It drove me crazy. All I'm worried about this year, the 48. We went up front. We'll get points. We'll make the playoffs. Jimmy had some great speed yesterday. He can get that track position and maintain it. He can't do that today. He had a great day in the points. Looking at some of these guys that run well yesterday that had to start toward the back of the top 20, working their way through the field. Harvick, Truex. And guys, I know it's early in this race, but you don't want to let that four car in front of you. You saw the speed <laughs> it had yesterday. Like, you just do not want to give that spot up at all. You may not ever get it back. No, Jeff, but I'm really watching Martin Truex Jr. in the 19. I know the four is the dominant car, but remember, Martin Truex Jr. had a flat tire stage one, spent over 50% of the race a lap down. That hurts you, making adjustments, improving your race car. I really look at him as the guy that can compete against Harvick. We'll see as he gets a huge push by Joey Logano in that top lane. Even the, you know, the greatest car out there from yesterday, Harvick. Oh, he gets loose, Truex up the track. Joey right on his bumper, gets him loose. But that inside line, if you don't have the momentum just right, you can get trained by that outside line down the front straightaway. And cleaning up real quick, the three of Austin Dillon, as I mentioned, did do his pass-through penalty. A long ways from losing a lap as Truex continues to slide up the racetrack. The three about a half a lap down, so hopefully he can stay in front of the leaders before the yellow. Kevin Harvick on lap 10. He has turned the fastest lap. So once again, Kevin Harvick, even though he's not up front, <laughs> Kevin Harvick running in the ninth position. You remember he started, well, he was supposed to start 20th, but uh, with all of the cars that ended up shuffling back to the back, started a little bit further forward. But Kevin Harvick into the top 10 and has the fastest lap. Yeah, and Rick, as you mentioned, that's without having clean air, so the competition doesn't want to see that. Well, the other name on that list, Jimmy Johnson, he had the second fastest lap of the race. We talked about how important points were goes 48 below the cut line. Well, he had track position to start the race and just unable to keep it. He's fallen back to 11th. He settled in, but the problem with 11th is that is zero points at the end of the stage versus William Byron here in the 24 is up in the fourth position working on the third position. That's eight or seven points. So I know what Chad Knauss is saying and Kelly reported that you know, they don't want to be 16th in points because a new winner bumps them out. But I, currently, they are outrunning the 48 car. You know, you, you show those fastest laps, Steve. That matters now because there's a formula to set the lineup for next week, and the fastest lap is part of that formula. Yeah, you told me you were excited. You were going to take me through step by step. There you go. This no, is it. Listen, here's the simple fact, guys. It's a complicated formula, but all you need to know is it's about performance. Where you finish matters. How fast you were matters, and where you are in the points matters. I like that better than the random jar. As a crew chief, Rick, I just feel like I can 
fight my driver for 10th, sure. ninth, eighth. Hey, man, this position, you may be sick of racing today, but one position may help us for a starting spot next week. So I like the new procedure. And Jeff, there will be a test. Well, and what I, I would say, well. <laughs> <laughs> what I would say to that is, Clint Boyer has to feel a little bit better about it because Clint Boyer thought that the random draw was hurting him over and over and over. Well, all of a sudden, the random draw, the invert process puts him up front. He has a 2.7 well, second lead over the field right now. So I rolled every time he said it. I said, "Come on, Boyer, you keep blaming qualifying." I'm going to have to call him up today and apologize for all yeah. the eye rolls because, as you mentioned, it's over almost a three-second lead, you know, nine to go in this stage. It looks like this could be a very important ten points for Clint Boyer. Remember, he is winless as well, so he's in that points battle to try to make the playoffs. So we know he's fast, right? He's driven away, has almost a three-second lead at this point. So his pit crew has got to keep him out front. He's got to do great research to stay out front because what we have seen with this car is when he gets back there in traffic, he cannot maneuver. He can't do what he needs to do. That's what Kyle Busch talked about his car yesterday. He liked his car, but in traffic, he struggled with it. So it shows you how important track position can be. Kelly. I had a similar conversation with Clint this morning where he said the car really wasn't bad, but to your point, he just felt like he couldn't make any moves or any progress forward being stuck back in traffic. So he told me with that front row starting spot today, he promised me he was going to be lightning quick, and he guaranteed to me a stage one win. So I've got him in my fantasy lineup, and now he's just eight laps away from doing just that. And these are some valuable playoff points that they can score, 10 stage points here, that will help push in that buffer to the cut line. Remember, he won here back in 2018. Another one of those drivers uh, who has a win this season and is really solid result, Ryan Blaney. A fourth place finish yesterday, and his crew chief, Todd Gordon, told me, really, they were just a little bit too loose to contend. So they went after making some balance adjustments rather than going for raw speed. But he said, hey, if it comes down to us in the four car at the end of the race, I give us a shot at it. Marty. Kurt Busch sitting in ninth right now. Had a terrific run yesterday, but struggled in traffic. And the same exact story today with that number one monster machine saying when he gets around other cars, car just gets way too tight. Over the years, Michigan has been a terrific racetrack for Kurt, hoping he can get another good finish today. Meanwhile, Denny Hamlin has not made much progress. Started 17th today. He's only made it up to 13th, while Harvick and other guys, including a teammate Kyle Busch, have made their way much further further up in the field but then he said something very interesting at the start of the race he said we're not showing all we can show right now we're going to be good by the end of the day and they told me hey on this tire takes Denny a while to get going but he knows when the car can be good Kelly Tyler Reddick didn't really get to find out what his car was made of yesterday they felt like they had a really fast race car but he had contact with Martin Truex Jr. early in the race a flat tire that they had to come in for and that set him down a lap. They had more damage late in the race and were actually forced to go to the backup car. So they made a few changes, but felt like they learned enough about yesterday. They felt confident. Randall Burnett, his crew chief, told me they felt like they were going to have some speed again today. So starting from the rear, Reddick up to 17th, they have actually been able to make some progress. Back up in the top three, Kyle Busch moved into third position. Steve, you talked about the feedback we heard earlier. Seemed like Kyle's pretty confident and comfortable about this car and his opportunity to try to get that first win today, and he's driving right through this field. Yeah, I mean, his confidence was there. And, you know, we heard it, though, right? He didn't run great for Kyle Busch standards, but he's still pretty positive. But, guys, the driver I'm looking at right here, Eric Jones in the 20. We continue to talk about the points. Well, he's below. This is the bubble battle. In front of him, William Byron in the playoffs. Him, first car out of the playoffs, riding on board the him in this statement is Eric Jones. So that's one point with the 24. Another one point if he can get to the 21. Another point if he can get to the 18. Here you go. A big wow. run. Where's he going with it? He has to check up. Oh, my goodness, what a run he had. <laughs> I love the fact he just drove it up in there. Going to get beside him and see what happened after that. That was fun. James Davison probably didn't think it was that much fun driving the 51 there as he saw the 20 getting huge in his mirror. So there's one point for the 20. Listen, three to go. I'm on the pit box for that 20, Marty. I am encouraging him. Tell him I'm loving what I'm seeing. Go give me some points. 
Yeah, Chris Gale definitely saying that Eric's doing a terrific job out there. And I had the chance to visit with Eric before the race. Obviously, the news coming down this week, as you mentioned earlier, Rick, will not be back at Joe Gibbs Racing in 2021. And he said, there definitely was a little fire in my belly yesterday to show, hey, you made a mistake. I should be in the 20 car. But I know there are opportunities out there for me. And Steve, speaking of Chris Gale and his relationship with Eric Jones, he called him right after they got the news. And he said, you know what? The best thing for you, the best thing for me, and everybody on this team go out there and win prove your market worthiness and show you deserve to be in a top ride and who knows we all may move forward together somewhere else i like that strategy i mean i put myself in that position what would i say you know i was at a loss for words but i like that approach chris gale you know encourage your driver let him know i want you to find a spot the best thing i could do is to give you fast race cars and he's done that as the 20 continues to find spots but can he in the final lap of this stage? And Chris Gale, the crew chief, he's working for his job too, right? I mean, every everybody in this sport is constantly being evaluated and constantly, you know, being determined by the owners what is the best thing to do. So he's racing for his job too. Kevin Harvick with a big run right here. See if he can get to that quarter pan or that 12 car. Clint Boyer, he called his shot. He said to Kelly, and Kelly obviously didn't tell any of the rest of us, or we would have had him winning stage one, but he said to Kelly, he guarantees he's going to win stage one. He backs up that call. He'll win stage one here at Michigan. Thanks, Kelly. Thanks a lot, Kelly. Good job there, bud. Christopher Bell, Kyle Busch, Matt DiBenedetto, Eric Jones, the top five in stage one. Then it's Byron Blaney, Harvick, Busch, and Logano. Bush, William Byron making up row one as we get back underway for stage two. Very organized in the top. Two veterans out there. No surprise. I mean, those guys have done it for so long, and look how well clear they are. And Forrest trying to get that outside here. He's trying to get the outside quarter panel. He's way up the racetrack. Now, remember yesterday, there was a little bit of uh, bumping, and it moved the 18 out of the way. Now, the four helps the 18, but the four passes him, and now Kevin Harvick back in front in Michigan. Wow, same thing we saw from Kevin Harvick yesterday. That's how he would get the lead back, push somebody, then get up on the outside of him. There you go, Clint Boyer chose that outside lane, right? If he comes out of this restart in third, he's going to consider that a victory because he wasn't going to really be able to pass both of those guys. Restart on the outside, he just was afraid he was going to lose spot. So they got what they wanted out of that restart. Right, look where Jimmy Johnson is now. He restarted third. He's always, almost back to 10th place. So hard for those guys on the inside line. That guy on the front, William Byron, hanging in there in fourth with the Battle of Keselowski. He's going to get some help from Jones down into turn three. Jones using that high groove. He's going to try. Oh, he's going to have to lift. Gonna try to get the outside at 24, couldn't make it work. Now who gets the run? Eric Jones is way out of the gas. Is anybody, there it is, Joey Logano, Kurt Busch on the bottom, trying to take advantage of him lifting. Luckily that 95 kind of stuck with the 20 and helped him pick his momentum back up. That's what I was impressed with yesterday, I think, Jeff, is when you lost momentum, if someone stuck with you, you kind of got it back pretty quickly. If they dumped you, man, you would fall like an anchor all the way down the straightaway. Drafting really matters. Some action on the restart. Mark Tricks Jr. down into turn three here. Four wide almost. He's got that 43 on his outside. Can't get back to the gas. Look at Austin Dillon. <laughs> I didn't really see a problem with the car getting loose or tight, but just wasn't able to get back to the gas. Like you said, Steve, lose that momentum. Everybody goes around you. They see blood in the water. They try to attack. Jeff, you mentioned Austin Dillon. No out of bounds here in Michigan. They can go down on the apron. We saw Austin Dillon all the way down on the apron trying to make the pass. Great battle right here for third. Keselowski trying to side draft the 14. And Clint Boyer down the back straightaway. Clint in the outside line is the preferred line. Brad still got a little side draft there. Look at Clint working that steering wheel. He is sawing on the wheel. And we see that, the DeKalb camera looking back at him. What a perfect fit for Clint Boyer, a, a country kid out of Kansas and a seed company sponsoring his car. Brad still trying to side draft that quarter panel. Down into turn one. 
Grant's going to be cleared. If I'm a spotter, I'm telling him, you clear, you clear. Go ahead and go up there and take that line away. Take the air away from that 14. You mentioned Clint Boyer. Remember, we called him a few weeks ago, and he was on his farm, doing some farming. You know? Sitting on his tractor, actually. Yeah. Flipping switches on that dash. Imagine he's trying to adjust bands or something to affect the handling of that car. Right now, it's really important for Clint Boyer to be providing information. Okay, I was leading this race. Now I'm not. And now my car is driving differently. How? What does it need to do better? Whoa, he was wow. way loose right yep. there. And that's, that's what that is, is that's air. And so this is the first time he's been back there. And this is the problem we've seen with this 14 car. We just saw Brad drive by him for third place. And now Brad's on up here, passing the 18 for second. We saw this yesterday in the race. Kozlowski had a, had a really quick car. Wasn't able to capitalize and win the race. But man, looking really good right here. Christopher Bell. A young driver out of the Xfinity Series, fighting for Rookie of the Year here in the Cup Series. And you see, started fourth. We're currently running fourth. Started back in the eighth position. Young man really is focused. Uh, he's been a Toyota driver for quite some time now. I think Toyota really likes this young man, uh, hoping for great things out of him. I know we've talked about Levine Family Racing, uh, the team getting sold, the possibility as we ride along with Eric Jones, he's not coming back to Joe Gibbs Racing. A lot of people are thinking that we'll see Christopher Bell go over to Joe Gibbs Racing and fill that spot. Marty? Meanwhile, on the racetrack, Eric Jones sitting in seventh and struggling with a race car that's extremely tight right now. How tight? Listen on the radio. So tight on the entry to three. I need to be better on the entry. So I threw it all start, and then I just fall out through the center. I guess my entry just mostly to three, and then it just, you know, once I'm tight there, it carries. He went on to say it's number four to five tight in the center of the corner. And when your scale is one to five, that means your race car really will not turn in the center of the corner. Meanwhile, his teammate Denny Hamlin right in front of him has finally came to life. I go back to what Denny said about lap 10 of the race. We're not showing what we can do. We're going to be good today. He did not show it in stage one, but here in stage two, the 11 car has come to life. Denny right now sitting in sixth. Let's ride along with Eric Jones. He was talking about he was tight on corner entry, right, into turn three. And that's where he felt like all the trouble started. Well, you know, drivers have a huge ability to impact how the car drives, right? So obviously wide open down the front straightaway. And this is in, he was obviously approaching turn one, not turn three. So watch what he does with the brake and the throttle. So he's wide open. Barely comes off the gas just a little bit in one and two. Now watch three and four, what he has to do because of the problems he was talking about. You see those green dots? Drives in the corner, out of the throttle, almost all the way out of the throttle, and out of the throttle longer than he is in one and two. That's what you have to do as a driver. You have to adjust your speed from each end of the racetrack. And also, Junior, the angle that you approach the corner at, you know, where you're trying to get the car to point, that can influence in making the car tight or loose as well. Yeah, with this racetrack, the bottom groove is a little bit flatter. You see those seams? Each seam, the, the track kind of flattens out the lower you get. You help the car turn by putting the left front on a flatter part of the racetrack. He's adjusting his mirror just a little bit there. Go off the middle corner here, and he enters pretty high. Good arc into the corner. He's not going to cross the seam to get to the bottom. Look at the steering wheel. He just turns it to the left. Remember when we rode along with Clint Boyer? As he has wheel was to the right, to the left, to the right, to the left. Clint was kind of chasing the back of his car a little bit because he was free. Eric Jones, you can see his wheel. He just turns it, and he stays there. Look, he just sits there. That means he's tight. He's trying to get those front tires to work. Kelly. Checking back on one of our rookies, Tyler Reddick. Remember, he won.
He won here at Michigan in the Xfinity Series, and his crew chief, Randall Burnett, told me he just loves these tracks, these big two-milers, high-speed tracks. He said the more on-throttle time for him, the better. He also said he feels like a win is in with reach for this team, and while they could possibly point their way into the playoffs, Randall Burnett, as crew chief, we know is not afraid to kind of throw a curveball when it comes to strategy, and he alluded to me today that if the opportunity presents itself in this race here, they might try to get off strategy from the others to try something to make up some of the track position. His best finish, a runner-up at Texas. And remember who he finished runner-up to? It was his teammate, Austin Dillon. So Austin now walked into the playoffs. And because of that, they're not really concerned about points. Yesterday, they actually showed some speed, kind of running up in the top 10 at certain points. And uh, Justin Alexander, the crew chief, said, look, it, we were bad. We were a little too loose yesterday, so we want to make a few changes to try to get to that next level today. But it was a late race crash that forced this three team to go to a backup car. So they had to start from the rear. But guess what? This backup car is that race winning car from Texas. And Austin Dillon's brother, younger brother, Ty Dillon, drives the Geico number 13. They run at 26 currently. And I know they had high hopes in this tire combination. They ran 10th at Las Vegas on this tire, ran 16th at Kentucky. Looking for hopefully another top 15 yesterday. Got an okay finish, 23rd, a little bit better than they had run. But good news out of the Dillon family back at Kentucky. Ty and his wife Haley announced that they're going to have a boy in November, a second child for Ty. So congratulations to the Dillon family. Battle for 10th right here between buddies, Ryan Blaney, Chase Elliott. Blaney restarted at the back of the field because he had to come down pit road to get more fuel before this stage began. And now with four laps to go in the stage, he drove all the way back up into the top 10, got a fast race car. Looking at his lap times, he's pretty quick, top five lap times. Eric Almarola has been the quickest car of the last several laps, even better than his teammate leading the race, Kevin Hart. Junior, you mentioned buddies. Uh, between Ryan Blaney, uh, Chase Elliott, and Bubba Wallace, the three of those guys away from the racetrack will hang out and do things. Did you guys, did you have a group of friends that were also race, race car drivers that you did things away from the track with? Oh, yeah, Elliott Sadler, McMurray, Casey Mears, Truex, long list of guys that hung out with and and you know even Matt Kenseth but you know what happens on the racetrack <laughs> you race, you didn't really you weren't buddies anymore when you got on the racetrack yeah kind of actually race those guys harder and use them up even more because you know you could get out and go hey man I had to do it, you know so yeah. did you tell them that then or you're just telling them that now After, no, no, no. <laughs> Yeah, he tells them that now as they're sitting around the campfire, you know, yeah. having yeah, some of it all doing what? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so how is Kevin Harvick so dominant at this racetrack? Well, not only this racetrack, but this year, but especially this racetrack. He won every stage yesterday and the race. Now he's looking like he's going to end up winning stage two. He's under two laps away from that. But this guy is in a class of his own right now. This is perfect, uh, the perfect combination of a racetrack that where they can trim the car out, right? He has the car trimmed out, and he has the speed in the corner, the comfort in the corner from Rodney Childers. Marty. Final lap of stage two here. Kyle Busch came on the radio a moment ago, said, hey, I feel, feel like I have a tire coming apart. Now, I saw the first set of tires that came off of Kyle Busch's car. They looked fine, but we've seen cording on that left front. Kelly showed us that a moment ago from, uh, from uh, William Byron. But if they can hang on, it should be fine. Last lap, fortunately, but Kyle Busch says he feels like he has a tire coming apart. Well, he's sitting right there, right behind that two car. He doesn't look like he's off the gas trying to nurse it home, racing for second here. Yeah, Harvick's going to win the stage, and it looks like the Keselowski-Kyle Busch battle will go to Keselowski. <laughs> Underway with the final stage. line not as organized as it was the restart before and you see that inside line Blaney pushing that 11 car down into turn one into the lead yeah, Blaney turned left on the 11 car remember Blaney had that penalty or not a penalty but had to stop for a second time for fuel and so he has been working himself back from the back and he is doing a nice job right here might have the lead oh. with the Harvey pushing him 
Yeah, but Harvick looked like he wanted to figure out a way to go around these guys. It he was wasn't opening. He's going to try to go three wide, but Blaney was ready to block that. Here he comes to the bottom. So Kevin Harvick wasting no time trying to get back to the front. But he's on the inside line. That outside's lined up. They're going to push right back by him. Blaney into the lead, the 11 car. Denny Hamlin to the outside. Here comes Chase Elliott to push Hamlin through. Guys, I'm making a note. This We saw this at the end of yesterday's race. The bottom can work. If you can pull up and gain spots, you can make it work on a restart. Pretty strong right here for Kevin Harvick. We'll see if he's able to clear the 11. Now he's going to side draft to try to pull him back a little bit. I think good forward momentum. Yeah, good forward momentum yeah. getting into the corner. That's the key. You have that forward momentum. That tends to let you get that pass made. <laughs> he's clear. <laughs> he sure did. Look at Blaney, though. Oh, he's the got nine the almost race. Fence. Chase Elliott almost in the wall. Maybe did get the fence a little bit there off turn four. He's getting a shove from the 18 of Kyle Busch. Maybe Big shove a little turn bit. one. Huge run. It was close. Oh, yeah. Just barely gets in the wall there. Kozlowski able to get by the 18. Now Kyle is pushing Brad Kozlowski. He has a big run. Oh, the four. The so, four went in there and committed to the top, but also Blaney, Blaney did as well. It took all the air off the four car, so Denny Hammond can go around on the inside and take second place. I think that... Harvick was expecting the 12 car to run that high. Blaney was watching that line and took it away from him. See the bottom screen where Blaney ran. That's typically what he does is run that middle line. That time he took the groove away from Harvick. Now Harvick's fending off a battle from Brad Kozlowski for third. First time we've ever seen this four car kind of vulnerable here. Harvick loose right there into three. Wow. Moving around a lot. Battle for, for the lead off of turn four. Here comes Denny Hamlin in that FedEx 11. He didn't get there, but the uh, guys behind him, who he needs to worry about the two, has a great run down the front straight away. He's going to clear that 11 car down into turn one. Yeah, 11 had a problem off turn four and just lost all of his momentum. Brad Kane making a move on his team. Oh, they lose. Oh, Ricky. They catch the 12 and the two into the wall. Hard, hard hits. Penske drivers. You saw the two go up the racetrack, catch the 12, both of them into the wall coming off a two. Yeah. Hard racing. Brad hit really hard. Overcorrected that car up into his teammate and right into the fence. They both hit the wall hard, but Brad's angle was pretty tough. Tough, tough crash, too, because both these guys were fast. And it's frustrating, isn't it, when your teammate, you know, you're racing hard. He, Brad didn't mean to wreck him, but he did. It, it's just so frustrating. Here, here, Brad drives to the bottom. Now he's on that flat surface. Left side's on that yellow line, loses it, gets up the racetrack, gets into Blaney. Big hit. I really think, guys, when... Look at that hit. Wow. Hard, hard hit. He slammed the wall hard. Wasn't able to steer that car then. Took a long time for him to get it stopped. And, that, you know, many times we've seen Blaney leading races and getting a crash. Seems, seems like I've seen that several times. That's tough. He's got the moment. Oh, clear That's tough because it's your teammate. Three back. Now, right front here. You know, go, low, 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 racing low. hard. Yeah. Racing for the lead. Look Brad. right here. See right there, Keselowski, really low. It's so flat down there. I just think that got his car unsettled. Back of the car started around. You said it, Junior. He had to turn right to keep from spinning out and just turn directly into his teammate. See who pushes best. Kevin Harvick behind the 11 and Kurt Busch behind his brother. Coming back to the green flag, back underway. 55 laps to go in Michigan. Still outside of the fuel window. Three wide back behind this group, and it looks as though Denny Hamlin is going to have to fight off the four again. Big, big smoke. Yeah, big smoke coming out from back behind here. That's the 14. Clint Boyer, they didn't get the, the tire rub, the damage from the 18 car and the contact they had. I don't think they pit it. Oh, well, we're going to have an issue with that. Four cars to the outside for the lead. Clean air for Kevin Harvick. 
spells trouble for the rest of the field and he's out front again. Man, just before that caution, it looked like they may have an answer for that four car, but two of the best cars I think today were taken out in that wreck. Now what can Denny Hamlin, these rest of these guys do? To try to make sure Hart doesn't sweep. Look at that tire smoke, that's pretty bad. Yeah. I think you have to consider bringing him to pit road, Steve. Yeah, I'm actually shocked they didn't come after the accident. You see the damage on the left side. I know you don't want to give up the track position, but now, I mean, what do you do? This is a don't tremendous. Get run over, though. Oh, yeah, he's coming. He's coming right here. Kelly. Yeah, you just heard the call. They told him to come to pit road as soon as he could get clear. I mean, when they first assessed that damage, they felt like it was mostly in the door. They said the fender is wrinkled, but they did not think they had a tire rub. That's why they left him out there for the restart. But obviously, we saw the smoke. They've got to come in here, pull out that fender, and change those tires so they don't have a future rub. Guys, Johnny Klossmeyer has to take control of the situation. It's easy to say after you see that it rubs, but this is a 180 mile an hour racetrack with over 50 laps to go. Clint Boyer had points. He was having a good day, gaining those stage points. Take your medicine. The 88 ran into you. There's nothing else you can do. Now the 14 on pit road, the field coming by him. He's gonna lose a lap. Man, just a tough decision for the 14, but I think that coming to pit road was a much easier decision after that accident. Yeah, Steve, you know what that decision was made about? Track position. This, you know, Clint Boyer's talked about it all year long. They had track position. They simply didn't oh. go. Caution. Christopher Bell in the 95. And a lot of smoke rolling out from underneath him. Oh, it doesn't look like he got into well, a little bit that right side flat. He was running 10. Yeah, it looks like he's gotten into the fence off the corner. And now if you were the 14, you wish you would have run one more lap. One more lap, they would have got lucky as could be. Wait a second, Steve. Hold on, you can't no, I change like your pitting. tune. No, I like pinning under yellow, and now I'm saying they wish they ran another lap. Okay. I like that they, I think the tire was going to go flat. I agree with the call of calling them in. Restart happening. 47 laps to go from Michigan. Almirola, on a mistake, is out front. Can he capitalize on it, or will it be Harvick in the four who had two left side tires when he came to pit road? Can he take the lead back? Kevin Harvick has to hope right here is if he can't clear it, Almirola, is there a hole behind him? That hole is getting filled up quickly, so now Harvick's got to make this work on the bottom. Look at him lined up on the outside lane. Harvick's hanging in there. Amarola way up the track. To keep the momentum up. Now, what does the 21 do? That's kind of the decision. Go with the 10. Yeah, he's going to help that 10 on the outside. Harvick's still hanging out there, man. Down into turn one, the 10's going to clear. 21 can't quite get to the four's quarter panel, so Harvick can either get behind a 10 here, which he does. And why this decision for the 10 is such a struggle is not because we thought he needed tires to make it drive better, but I believe the rest of the field are going to stretch their fuel tanks. The 10 of Eric Amarola, Rick, is going to have to come to pit road for fuel. He cannot make it the final 46 laps. So you think people are going to be able to go a little bit further than what their fuel window is? They're right at it? I think they're going to try. Okay. Great situation, though, for the 10 is that he had a very fast car, even faster than Harvick, while Harvick was leading before this last caution. So. Maybe this can work out if the cautions fall the right way for Eric Amarola to actually take the lead of this race, take control of this race. Yeah, we've seen it, right? We've seen unfortunate breaks turn into good fortune. Maybe I think he was, out. yeah, I think it was the best car on the racetrack, but I don't know if he could have passed Kevin Harvick on the racetrack. So maybe he passes him in the pit road, and this is what helps him win this race. It's absolutely amazing how bad they ran yesterday. This 10 car. They were bad. They just ran terrible. And then switch it around, change setups, different car, and come out and have a car this fast. That shows you that the setups you put in these race cars has a huge bearing on how they, how fast they can go and how the drivers can drive them. 
Great adjustment by this team, don't you think, Steve? I mean, to sit down overnight, go from running that bad to this well, that's some really good work by those guys. Great adjustment, and when I talked to Eric this morning, I basically asked him, I said, all right, buddy, are you worried? And I could tell instantly by his reaction to see Truex come into the picture fighting for third over Matt DiBenedetto, he instantly said, nope, I'm not worried. I know what we were trying, it didn't work. I'm confident we could go back. You can hear it in his voice that he knew they had an answer. I wasn't completely sure if I believed him because he has struggled at Michigan, but he was absolutely right, and here he is leading the race. Well, it was interesting Ooh. in that conversation, Steve. He talked about putting, he, you know, they just were trimmed out a little too much. Didn't have enough for a grip. Needed to tighten it up some. That's what they were able to do today. And Denny Hamlin almost went three wide there. Oh, Logano lifted. It's a great battle right here. All over out of gas. <laughs> so that's a, that's a situation right there where Logano, he didn't have to lift right there, but had he not, it could have gotten ugly. Came out of the throttle, gave Denny Hamlin a break. With five to go, he may not lift right there. <laughs> yeah. If they're going for position, race win, potential, you stay in the gas. Right now, Eric Almarola is staying in the gas. Remember, he came to pit road on lap 88, so he has gone 26 laps. Steve, you mentioned 46 around there for the fuel window. So he's got about 20 more laps. He's hoping that a caution would come out so that he could hold on to this position. But right now, he is under fire from Kevin Harvick, who's been the fastest in Michigan all weekend. Yeah, and it, it's kind of a quandary for the 10 car. The leaders aren't going to stay out. They got a lot of confidence in these Goodyear tires, even though there is some heavy wear. You saw the four put fresh left side tires on it because of it. I think they all know it's about track position at this point. So as you mentioned, Jeff, the 10 needs to sing a run of maybe 20 to go to force the back half of the field to pit with him so he can restart somewhere in the 10th or 12th position. I don't think there's any way he's going to stay in the top 10 with the strategy goal. Look at the four car. That is so impressive. Just turns down the banking. Can he get up beside the quarter panel? Yeah, he's right there. He's going to carry this momentum down the back straightaway. Right on by the 10 car. Nothing Eric can do there. But that's his own team car. The reason I said it, everyone I talk to when we talk about the four, they say, look, he's good through the corner, but he is great down the straightaway. So you would think of a car that trimmed out, that low on downforce. He flies down the straightaway, but man, when I get to the corner, he's going to be out of the gas, and I'm going to catch him. And Kyle Busch said, the problem is he gains, you know, X down the straightaway, and he doesn't give all of it back, right? He just finds a way to carry that speed through the corner, and it's not comfortable. I mean, look at this wiggling around. How about this, uh, Almirola? Dove to the bottom of the racetrack, trying to get that clean air on the nose. He's holding on to second. Now it's three car lengths that separate one and two. Truex Jr. running third. Matt Benedetto is up here in the top five, running in the fourth spot. If Kevin Harvick wins today, it'll be his fourth Michigan win in the last five races here. I asked Rodney Childers if this track was starting to feel a lot like Phoenix, another place where they seem to always show up. And when he said, yeah, it kind of is a little bit. They said, look, every aspect of our team is running so well right now. I almost want to show it to other crew chiefs to let them see just how good it could be. He also says the success they've had in this new format is because they've always just been so good at bringing the best equipment straight off the truck. They don't need a lot of practice time to dial things in. Behind him, his teammate, Eric Amarola. The miscue was over the word hot dog, but he looks like he's got a hot rod now that he's been able to run up front. Eric has said that Michigan has been a weird place for him. He always likes running here. He won a truck race early in his career, but the results really haven't shown for it. They were certainly frustrated yesterday, went to the backup car, made wholesale changes. Now he had already gained a lot of track position before that miscue on pit road put him up front. We'll see what they can do, knowing that they've got to pit one more time, Marty. Well, Kelly, for the second straight day, look who's come to life at the end of the Michigan race. Martin Truex Jr., who started way back in the pack is up to third right now or struggle back in the pack is up to third I asked James Small the crew chief earlier think you're good on fuel to the end he said absolutely no problems Rick yeah it looks like Eric Almarola offering a little heat here to the four of Kevin Harvick did Harvick make a little mistake which we have not seen in I don't know maybe seven or eight races <laughs> he's, he's almost mistake free but we saw the 10 of Eric Almarola get a little bit closer to the back bumper just wonder if Kevin Harvick is saving a little bit of fuel right here. Doing good with what you're doing there. I had 300, so I'm trying to keep the temperature down. There you go. Crew chief, 300, too hot, or is he okay? 
Ooh, that was too hot in my day, but these guys have worked on trying to run more temperature that allows more tape, more aerodynamic advantage. You see the tape right there on the grill. Looks like they've added some throughout the race. Maybe a little bit too much, Steve? Well, I mean, I mean, it's a it's a gain to have it on there. Um, you know, it sounded like Harvick didn't, I didn't hear panic, I guess, is how I, I go off the panic level. 300 made my stomach panic, but apparently Harvick didn't sound too panicked. And, that, and to me, Rodney Childers saying, keep doing what you're doing. And he said, I'm trying to keep the temperature out. The only thing that he as a driver can be doing to keep the temperature out is to pull a little bit of throttle out of it, right? And, and not burn as much fuel. So he's trying to save fuel and keep temperature out. So I think that's what Kevin Harvick's doing right here. Right rear flat for Alex Bowman in the 88, and oh. that carcass is going to come off, which probably will bring out a caution now as it's on the racetrack. And sure enough, the caution has come out, and does that save Eric Almirola, who is running fourth? That is exactly what the 10 of Eric Almirola needed. I mean, at this point, I don't think he could ask for an exact better lap. They have run long enough on the tires that I believe some guys are going to come to pit road as we see work on the 88 of Alex Bowman getting some right side tires on it. Remember, he had that contact with the 14. You have to ask yourself, was there a rub? It was damage on the right side. But you can't ask for a better time. Jeff, you said 20 laps, get a caution. Man, your magic eight ball is working. Well, miscommunication. It actually helped this time. Yeah. No, One of the nobody, few times it actually helped. Nobody say hot dog right now, OK? <laughs> nobody say hot dog. If they were smart, they, we planned that the whole way. you've got behind him for this restart. I do too. I think you got to go to that inside line and hope that you're wide open, right? On a restart, you're wide open down into turn one, carrying full throttle all the way around that corner so the shorter distance is the bottom. If you get the right push down the front straightaway, you will be leading this race if you're Denny Hamlin in the middle of turn one and two. So what's Truex answer? Get to the right rear quarter panel of the four? That's what he's got to be trying to do. Let's get to the right rear quarter panel and slow him down on the entry or right before the middle of turns one, one and two. They're not connected on, on either line, but it looks like 22 is going to get to the back. Nope. Nobody gets tandem. That was straight straightaway. That 18 car got to the right rear corner of the, of the 22, and that kept the 22 from pulling up to the 11. How about Kurt, Kurt Busch. Busch in the one through the middle? Threading the needle, and Kurt Busch takes fourth away. But Denny Hamlin's got an opportunity right here. Not going to be able to get into the, I thought he might could get in that hole behind the 19. He's not going to be able to do it. See if he can make it work down here. It's going to be tough sledding to try to pass this 19 of Truex. Oh, this is working great for Kevin Harvick out front as he drives away from both these guys. They're going to side draft down this front straightaway. Yeah, I think about Hamlin right here. I just lift. I just like, I, I got a spot to go. He chose to be aggressive, try to get by Truex. Let's see if it works out for him. They complete the pass and take second. Let's set his sights on the four. No, here comes Martin Truex Jr. fighting back on the outside. Mark Trex Jr. has finished second here three times, but never has won. These guys are just slowing each other down with the side draft, trying to get position on each other. Denny's going to get that slingshot into turn three, clear momentarily. He's going to drive up the track, try to take the line away from the 19. Look how hot of the racetrack that was. He had to go up high, and now the 11 of Denny Hamlin has second. Third, Martin Trex Jr. Kyle Busch is back there in fourth. Matt Benedetto was fighting for that fifth spot. Logano has taken it away from him. And now they're second behind the leader. Can they close the gap with 13 laps to go? How strong is Kevin Harvick? We mentioned yesterday when he came into this weekend, he had won two of the last three races here. Then he goes and wins yesterday, making it three out of four and in a position to win his fourth Michigan race. You look at the numbers for Kevin Harvick, they are unmatched. We saw Eric Almirola have to pit for fuel. He has done some business on this restart. He has picked up nine spots already in just a few laps. What he needs is a caution or two. 
fast race car and a great job by getting those spots. I'm rolling in eight side by side here. We saw Kurt Busch as he was rocketing through the middle. Well, that momentum went away and now he has fallen all the way back here to the 10th spot. There's a ton of movement on these restarts. It's hard to keep up with. Everybody going forward and backwards. Looked like Kurt was going to be in great shape. Now look where he's at. Back up front, Denny Hamlin closed the gap just a little bit on our leader. Chopped it down to eight tenths behind Harvey. Driving away from Truex, who I thought actually might have the best car, but Truex is under fire from his teammate, Kyle Busch. You know, the 18 of Kyle Busch is looking for that first win of the season, but has to feel good for this 18 to come and have two races in a row. Good driving race car. He's going to try to get to the quarter panel of the 19. Unable to do it. You would think the three Gibbs cars could almost work together to try to run the four down, but so far to no avail, Marty. And that's exactly what Martin Truex Jr. said a moment ago. He came over the radio and told Clayton Hughes, a spotter, boy, I wish I could get closer to that 11 and help him out a little bit, but I just can't stay connected to his bumper. And he said, I bet the 18 saying the same thing. We can't seem to puss each other with the speed to catch that four. Is anybody surprised at the top two right now as far as how 2020 has gone? I won't lie, I'm a little surprised by Denny Hamlin. He hasn't run as well in this tire combination. Yesterday he faded at the end. I didn't have him a top five car today. I know Dale Jarrett did. He continued to talk about it at the beginning of the race. Uh, but Denny Hamlin has found a way to be competitive even on the tire combinations he doesn't prefer. So to your point, 2020, I guess we should just always say Harvick Hamlin. But we think back to Kansas, all right? Harvick was leading the race. Denny drove up to Harvick and passed him on the outside. Harvick didn't even move into the higher groove to try to take that line away. So we've seen this before where it's easy to think, man, Harvick's been so fast, so good today. He's going to dominate and win another race, sweep the weekend at, in Michigan. But we've seen this left car drive, the, drive up there and pass him at the end of the race before. We've also seen before is that remember at Indianapolis where it looked like Denny Hamlin was going to drive to a victory. He had a tire failure late. These things are never over until they're over. So Harvick takes the high line there. Then he has to go to the bottom. I don't know if Denny's car has the speed on the bottom. He's been making time, catching this four car, using the high line. Now Harvick's gonna maybe try to take that away from him. No, Harvick to the middle, to the bottom of the racetrack, giving that 11 car the top. Denny again coming with momentum. He's closed the gap. Remember it was Look almost a second between them, and now it's less than three tenths of a second between the top two. Watch him game. Look at Harvick looking in the mirror. He's like, oh no. Get busy now on that bumper. Here he comes, the 11 with a run. Now Kevin Harvick went to that top lane. Then he has to go to the bottom. Not sure that's his preferred line, but he hangs in there. Harvick now with the momentum off the corner. That's the advantage of that top lane. It just lets the car. Here, one and a half. Let's the car run better down the straight. Two. Five wins out of both of these drivers. They're the best Harvick in to 2020. The top. Harvick to the top there. Gonna try to take away that advantage that the 11 car has been using in that line. Now look at Harvick looking in the mirror. Okay, I did some good work there. I'm looking in the mirror. The 11's not coming. I like that top line. I might try it again. He's not gonna give Denny Hamlin the top. He's not gonna let him get on the outside of him. If he gets on the outside of him, it'd be hard to fight him off. Even if Denny Hamlin drives underneath him, he can side draft him and slow him down down the straight. So Kevin Harvick makes a mistake here. It'll be on the top lane, not the bottom. Last almost driving half of the lap, looking out the Not back of the race car. Back. Man, the what a great here. run to the middle of the corner half for the 11. Got a line right with you now. He in line. a little bit on corner exit. Now the four looks up there and sees that. Strong point. To break get the to draft. the center of three. Everywhere else we got covered. I think just three died laps off. to go. The last off. time there was a double header. These two switched the wins. Kevin Harvick won one. Denny Hamlin won one. That was at Pocono. Now in Michigan, Kevin Harvick's already won. Can he sweep the weekend, or will Denny Hamlin steal the win away? Breaking the draft down the back straightaway. Denny's better on this end of the racetrack. And three and four is where Denny's been able to make some ground. We heard the last time Harvick having to pull out of the throttle. Now Harvick back to the bottom of the racetrack. Denny's going to get a big run down this front straightaway. Yeah, I'm surprised by that. I'm surprised Harvick didn't run that top again. Here comes Denny with a huge run. Now Harvick's going to go to the top. He'll go back to the top. Look at Harvick. He looked at the. He was in the mirror the whole front straightaway. Look, he's he's going to go wherever that four is. He's almost driving out of the mirror, one eye. 
Looking down the front of the car with the other. Oh, oh he's out of the, the gas. gas, big time. So is Denny. Both of them really committed too much in the middle of the corner. Look at Harvick, look at his eyes. <laughs> he's not even looking out of the windshield. Both out of the throttle, big time off the corner. This is it, it's coming down to the final two miles at Michigan International Speedway. It's one lap to go. We saw a huge mistake off turn two for Harvick, or an issue that both drivers had. And Harvick has to remember that. He's got to make a little bit of a change so he doesn't have to come out of the throttle again on the exit of two. He made that change and never had to come out of the throttle. Great Bra point. Bragging rights for manufacturers right here in the manufacturer's backyard. The Heritage Trophy going to the winner. And right now, Kevin Harvick looking to sweep the weekend. Denny Hamlin's going to have some momentum on the high side. Will it be enough as they come out of four the final time? Kevin Harvick is going to sweep Michigan. He wins again. Wow, Denny almost go. got back to him. One of your competitors told me racing against you here is kind of like showing up to a gunfight holding a knife in your hand. But Denny Hamlin found a way to compete with you there at the end. How big of a challenge was that? It was a big challenge. Our uh, Bush Light Apple Ford Mustang got really tight there in three and four. I could run really good through one and two still, but I was just tight uh, on that other end all day. So just got to thank all my guys. They did a great job uh, all weekend on pit road. Uh, great pit calls. Uh, just got to thank Haas Automation, uh, Mobile One, Hunt Brothers, uh, Jimmy John's, uh, Fields. I know, no, you're watching at home. Um, everybody who helps put this uh, number four car on the track and everybody at Stuart Haas Racing and Roush Yates Engines for awesome, awesome power underneath the hood this weekend. This copyrighted telecast may not be reproduced, retransmitted, or used in any form without the authorized written consent of NASCAR Broadcasting. NASCAR would like to thank all of our fans for your support, and we hope you enjoyed today's broadcast.